I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to uh, the Yak and pushing this truth and sincerity and with charity. You know, um, I want to go on a quick history on uh, the Hellenization of uh, the Jews. You know, um, when I was browsing, I looked up the Maccabees and I saw information. I saw some information that I want to uh, bring out. You know, I thought it was really edifying. So um, I'm just gonna start off in background. You know, it says in the second century BC, Judea lay between the Ptolemaic Kingdom based in Egypt, the Seleucid Empire based in Syria, monarchies which had formed following the death of Alexander the Great. Judea had come under the Ptolemaic rule, but fell to the Seleucid around 200 BCE. Now, um. Antiochus Epiphanes spawned out of the Seleucid Empire. You know, just keep that in mind. It says Judea at the time had been affected by the Hellenization begun by Alexander. So before um, Alexander died, uh, there's a lot of Israelites, Jews mainly, um, for the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, being uh, adapting to uh, to Greek customs. It says some Jews, some Jews, mainly those of the urban upper class. Notably, the Tobite family, which wished to dispense, meaning to get rid of, wished to get rid of, wished to dispense with Jewish law and to adopt Greek lifestyle. So a lot of Israelites, when um, Greece came into power, they they became um, they became um, attracted or Hellenized by the by the Greek lifestyle, you know. Now, um, I'm going to go into the word Hellenization here. Hellenization, or Hellenization, is a historical spread of ancient Greek culture and to a lesser extent language or foreign peoples conquered by Greece or brought into its sphere of influence, particularly during the Hellenistic period following the campaign of Alexander the Great. Now, you can read about Alexander the Great in, in the book of Maccabees, and indeed, in the first book of Maccabees, he speaks about um, oh, how Israel started losing their custom. And I'm going to go into that in a bit, but you know, I just want to emphasize this part where it says um, uh, the spread of ancient Greek culture to a lesser extent, the language over foreign people. So foreign peoples meaning um, uh, nations outside of the Greek nation or nations outside of the Edomite nation this is conquered by Greece or brought into the sphere of influence so inf the influence of Greek culture was was introduced to Israel at one point you know now um, I just want to get a quick points on the Maccabees the first chapter and I want to start off well I'll start, I'll start off with the verse and I'll just jump down it says and it had happened after Alexander the son of Philip the Macedonian who came out of the land of Chittim has smited Darius of Persia and Medes that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. So I'll let you know that Alexander the, the the creep, you know, is mentioned in the Bible now. Now, like I said earlier, um, um, <clears throat> Antiochus Epiphany spawned out of the uh, Seleucid Empire because uh, so the Seleucid Empire was overthrown for a moment. Or actually, the, the Ptolemaic Empire was overthrown f by the Seleucid Empire. So I'm going to read this right here. It says, And there came out of the, them a wicked root, Antiochus' surname Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been uh, in hostage at Rome, and he reigned in 130 and seven years of the kingdom of the Greeks. So Antiochus Epiphanes reigned over Greece. All right. Okay, and I wanna so I wanna keep reading. It says in those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, "Let us let us go and make a covenant with the heathen," meaning uh, uh, the Edomite uh, Greeks, you know, that are round about us. For since we depart from them, we have had much sorrow. And yeah, this was a wicked Jake. Today, man, you know they make that covenant. That's what scripture says. Them that I found hand in hand with them should be thrust through, man. Meaning, um, destroyed, man. So, uh, so, but the point really is that a lot of, they made a covenant with the heathen, meaning they, uh, 
made an agreement with them. You know, now I want to scroll down because it's Israel making agreements with Esau. Now I want to scroll down to verse 41. Um, it says, Moreover, King Antiochus, now this whole now this whole chapter is real good. It says, but more, moreover, King Antiochus wrote this whole kingdom. So like, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So this involved Israel. It says, and everyone should leave his own laws. Now it says, uh, verse 43. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Now, now here's it's gonna go into a list how Israel forsake the Most High and started to um, to follow after uh, the law of the land, which was which Antiochus Epiphanes um, established. You know, for the king has sent letters by messengers unto uh, Jerusalem and unto the cities of Judea that they should follow the strange laws of the land. You know, now Israel was forced now to follow after the after the customs of the heathen man, after the customs of the Greeks and the Romans. It says, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice drink offerings into the temple that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. You know, and now it goes into how Israel did these wicked deeds, man, just to please um, this wicked root, Antiochus Epiphanes. Now, um, um, now I want to go back uh, verse 46 uh I mean it's like verse 41 it says um moreover a king and wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people so it, so here then Israel you know instead of calling themselves Jews they started calling themselves Greeks man and that's how really the start of uh, the Hellenization started man how really uh Israel started losing its heritage you know now um now I want to go into uh, different scriptures in the New Testament where it's where it speaks about the Grecians and the Greeks. Now this is um, Acts 11 and 20. It says, And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Yahweh Shai. Now this is um, well over some time. After Antiochus Epiphanes, because Antiochus Epiphanes was at the scene before, way before um, Yahweh Shai. Uh, you know, I think, I think it was um, uh, well, 200 BCE. So roughly around, you know, uh, well, really Antiochus Epiphanes came to the scene 215 BCE. So yeah, two hundred, like roughly two hundred years before Yahweh Shai. So you you gotta think about those two hundred years, Jake living and being influenced by the Greek lifestyle, how how drastic change over the years had to come, you know. Just how, uh, for an example, how uh, how how so-called Isakar, I mean so-called Mexicans now in America have adopted to the American lifestyle, but go back two three generations uh they they lived that uh if they were uh they lived as as natives of of mexico you know but um so i want to go here at, when i read here i want to go into uh the word grecian and as you can see the word grecian there is um hell uh hellenistas you know i'll just let it play strong's g 1675 hellenistas hellenistas so the Greek way of saying it is Hellenistes, which is uh, Hellenist, Hellenist, or Hellenistas, you know, uh, one who imitates the manner of the or and customs or worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue, using the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. And now we read earlier how um, how there were some Jews who wished to depart from the laws and adopt the Greek lifestyle. You know, so that ha that happened. You know, and the reason why there was um, the word was taught to the Greeks or to the Grecians. You know, 
Now, uh, there's more examples, like in uh, the book of Galatians 3 and 28, how it speaks about uh, there's there's no difference between Jew or Greek, meaning because they're the same people. It's just that a Hellenist, now, I want to go, I want to look up the word he Hellenist. Hellenist or Hellenista, I believe. Well, this is good too, but uh, I'm going to use that for later. Hellenista. Or Hellenistic. Let me see. Uh, well, never mind. Um, let's go back into the scripture. Um, so, right. So, so, how the scripture says, man, um, salvation is for, for the Jews. You know, so... Really, when Paul was sent, he was sent to the uh, Israel uh, to the to the Israelite foreigners. You know, those that were born outside of Jerusalem. Now, I want to go into John seven and thirty five because I want to bring out a point here. It says, "Um, then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that that we should not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles?" So basically, the Jews were talking talking to themselves, so saying, "Hey, well, where will how will I go? Will he go among the?" Are people that are uh, that are uh, that are among the uh, the rest of the nations, you know. And now I want to look up. I want to go into the word disperse. Disperse. Because if you read the book of uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight, how it was prophesied that Israel was to be dispersed or scattered. For for the for the for breaking the the laws, statutes, and commandments of the heavenly Father, so uh, so dispersed, scattered abroad, scattered, a scattering dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations, of Christians scattered abroad among Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's why at first Yahweh Shai said, "Go not into the ways of the Gentiles or into the into the lands of the Samaritans." You know why? Because there was actual Gentiles living there, you know, real Gentiles, you know, but uh, you know, actually, bef not not keep in mind the word uh, diaspora, and, and I and I went into Google and I looked up Greek speaking Jews, and what I got was the Hebrews were Jewish Christians who spoke almost exclusively Aramaic, was which is basically Hebrew. And the Hellen and the Hellenist and the Hellenists were also Jewish Christians who whose mother tongue was Greek. There were Greek speaking Jews of the this diaspora who returned to settle in Jerusalem. Now if you look up the word diaspora, you're gonna you're gonna see that it says um diaspora, Jews living outside of Israel. The dispersion of the Jews beyond Israel. The dispersion of any people from the original homeland. But the point is here, the dispersion of Jews beyond Israel. That's why when you read the book of James 1 and 1, it talks about, it says, on greetings to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. You know, meaning to the 12 tribes outside of Jerusalem. Now, now you go in here, it says, the main diaspora began in the 8th to 6th centuries B.C., and even before the sack of Jerusalem in A.D. So yeah, because you know how we read earlier, how um how uh, Israel, when Greek conquered Israel, they they were they adopted themselves to that Greek lifestyle. So um and that was and then even before uh the 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 siege of Jerusalem in seven A.D. There's there's Israelites living outside of Jerusalem. Now it says the main dispor began eighth to sixth century BC and even back before the even back so like even before the sack of Jerusalem in seven AD, the number of Jews dispersed by the spoil was a greater than the living in Israel. So there's way more Israelites uh scattered abroad than in the land of Israel, especially today. It says thereafter Jews were dispersed even more widely throughout the Roman world and beyond. Now you go now it speaks a little bit about um the word it says disperse uh, across or and you know scattered and it says the term originated in the Septuagint which is the Old Testament written in Greek it says Deuteronomy 28 25 
uh, and this is Greek, and it says, "Thou shall be this, this thou shall be a dispersion in all kingdoms." So they gave you the scripture here. So um, <clears throat> now um, not that it, that's that. Um, right now that now now that that's that. Uh, I want to go real quick to Ephesians two and eleven, um, cause really salvation, really uh, the reason why I brought this out is cause um, um, because um, to, to further uh, give the understanding of how. Salvation was only given to Israel, and how the Yahweh Shai set up Paul to to um bring forth the word to those that were that were uh, Hellenized, to those that were uh that were on um, part of that diaspora, part of that that scattering. You know, this is um Ephesians two and eleven. It says, "Wherefore remember that ye be in time past Gentiles in the flesh." For called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision, the flesh made my hands, right? Because there was Israelite Jews who um who didn't consider Israelite foreigners um, Jews, man, because they were keeping they were keeping them Greek uh, the Greek lifestyle, man. So it says um, that at that time you were without Yahweh Shai, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, being foreigners. Being strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the Most High in the world, right? Because you know Jake was living living after the customs of the heathens, man. They weren't living and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. It says, but now in Yahweh Shai and my and Mashiach Yahweh Shai, ye who sometimes were far were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right. Because when you read in the book of Daniel uh, 9 and 7, it speaks about um, uh, Israel being far uh, being far off due to the transgressions of uh, 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 transgressions of, of, of our forefathers and transgressions of, of, of us, you know, us being our forefathers. But, um, I'm gonna read this again. It says, "But now in Yahweh Shai, ye, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai." You know, because at first, you know, the Jews kept to themselves, man. Any anybody else outside of Jerusalem was um we were considered um uh, uh, uh Gentiles or heathens, man. You know, that's when we read the book of uh, Acts, the second chapter. It speaks about how uh, devout Jews from every nation came to Jerusalem. To worship, you know, and a lot of them, and a lot of them came back with uh, with the customs of the heathens, man. But um, you know, hopefully this video was edifying, you know. And I want to give all praise to you, how about Shimi Shai and say attention to you. I can push this truth with sincerity and charity. Until next time, I want to say Shalom.